O Jérémy Bé, ni a de pia mi, no popo toke si a o domoto de ka, ti di o de ankoro bé. Boudis de ble manya o, no nanato, no te po wawo, kule no kule le de se aton o no ti. Pa kule no fia la, pe ya bia o cho fia fia no ti, akpa ane le e woji. Le no fia la kule, no sron vi o domo, le angle si bemo, po do reti ni, po no keke ton. Where else? Where were we? <laughs> okay, okay. I remember the Brahma, Brahma God, ne? the God of the third world, the highest level in the third world. In, the, in our physical, spiritual dimension, yeah? Mm. Lower physical, spiritual dimension. Even Brahma came and begged the Buddha, the enlightened master, to teach, to, to enlighten him and all his heavenly beings, and not just the humans, not just this physical level. Because Brahma also one day kaput, yeah, when his time gone, his world also dissolved just like our planet one time, or not, you see? So he came and begged the Buddha. So now he said, I also remember your world honor one. World honored one is one of the title, respected title that people address the Buddha, okay? Yeah. He has many, like world honor one, Arahant, uh, enlightened one, uh, Buddha, Okay, like that. Or also uh, heaven and earth master, also many names like that. It's just honorary title, honor title. He has ten honor titles, but I don't remember all. That's enough for you anyway, okay? <laughs> ten, <laughs> also ten. <laughs> we can't run away from numbers with him. Long time ago, there was a, a, a king named Tuloba also on this planet. He has, okay, already say many thousand already, huh? Okay. Uh, and then at that time, uh, his moral, his uh, fame, and his power, no one can compare at that time. He's absolute, you know, the, the master of all the kings. Because all the, his subjects, and all the sub-subjects uh, rely on his, on his merit, his uh, moral uh, store of merit. So all of uh, the countries very prosperous, happy, and peaceful. Yeah. So everyone is very, very glad, and they worship him. But one time, one day, he was thinking to himself, Concerning material possession and comfort, I lack nothing. But concerning spiritual uh, practice, to, to be able to liberate others, I don't have. If uh, a human just uh, live with material, a material gain only, or following a sexual desire, thing like that, you know, physical desire, then the heart is, is just like trees and wood, yes? Or pebbles and stones. And then to invite for disaster coming to this life. That is being born, you know, painful when you're born. You know, painful. It is said that when the, the, because we say, why, why is the Buddha including being born as one of the disaster? You know, for the human being, because according to scientists, when the baby is born, their skin was like many of the very painful, sore. You know, and a lot of uh, radicals and uh, um, bacteria attack them right away. Yeah. If they has not been protected, 
by somehow by themselves or by the mother's uh, DNA or with the mother's breast. That's why they always recommend that uh, the mother should breastfeed their babies because the mother's milk from her own breast will give the baby more, more protection than any other medicine can afford. So it's, it's very lucky for any baby who is breastfed by his own mother. So he included. At that time, there's no scientific proof, but the Buddha already know being born is a pain. You see, the four pain, the four disaster of human life is being born, getting old, getting sick, and die. So it's a four noble truth. He said, "How noble that can that be? <laughs> born, die, and sick. What do you call it? Four noble truth. Okay, fine. Yeah. All right then." So it is not different than any animals, you know, just eat and sleep and even uh, laying on top of uh, the, the pool, you know, on the dung and don't feel anything, just to pass time. It is my fault, the king thought. I have to find a way. It is my duty to find a way to liberate them, to liberate all these ignor ignoramus that he mentioned above. Okay. After thinking thirst, he uh, he posted messages, yeah, in a flyer everywhere, tapping on the walls everywhere, and asking all the people under the sun, anyone who knows about the truth of enlightened saints to liberate other beings can come and teach me. And then whatever that person wants, I will give without reservation. Yeah. He probably thinking just all the, the store of uh, jewels and money and, you know, even his kingdom or even his throne. Yeah. So, Oh, there was a god again, you know, the lower god of the astral level. Hear about that, see that. So he want to come down and test the king. Ah, oh, this, this boat god has nothing better to do than making trouble. <laughs> yeah, story after story, you will see all these kind of god keep coming and making trouble for the Buddha. The poor Buddha, I mean the poor Buddha to be. He's just a mortal, right? He has no power, nothing. He has only a sincere desire to liberate other beings, his subjects, for example. And then they have to come down and make trouble. You see what trouble he, he make. You will see. You will see and you cannot love them. Thank God we're not going there. We pass by, yeah? <laughs> Hello and say, you know, we pass by the astral love. But be respectful, huh? Otherwise he come and test you and then I, <laughs> I, I don't know what to do. Okay, this uh, god Koti Samung, he's one of the king in the, uh, no, probably astral level. He came down. He uh, changed himself, you know, he used a magical power no? to change himself into a vampire. Yeah, the face is very, very blue and green. No, green and blue, sun layer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's glowing green kind of, you know, ugly green. And his eyes is so red like blood. And his uh, teeth are as big as the banana. <laughs> <laughs> and it protruded out like fangs, you know. Ah, banana, banana, banana. <laughs> Probably his mouth will look like a bunch of banana. <laughs> okay, must be scary, yeah. Yeah, and then his, his hair is growing upward, you know, standing up. Probably he used some kind of spray, you know. <laughs> oh, gel, huh? Uh, hair gel. <laughs> Probably bought it from supermarket and, uh, and uh, take it up like those uh, junk nowadays, you know, punky people. No, hair all stood up. Yeah. And his mouth. Uh, you know, the fire comes out from his mouth. I, I guess he has some oil inside and then pull out, you know, like those people, and then, you know, 
You know these uh, circus people? They can do that. Probably that's what he does. No, he's not. He's just making trouble. He's just making himself look like trouble already. And then he came in front of the palace, torn away the flyer, and then said to the, the, the gatekeeper, you, go inside, tell the king, I know the truth, I will teach him. Let me in quickly. If he wants, I will teach him. Okay, the, 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 the gatekeeper was, uh, okay, quickly, quickly, go inside <laughs> and say, Your Majesty, uh, outside, there is a, <laughs> there is a, I don't know, a being or a person or whatever, it's, his appearance is terrifying. Yeah, but he said, he professed that he know the Buddha's teaching, you know, the truth, the enlightened teaching. So he wants to come in and teach you. Uh, please tell me what to do. So the, the king was very happy. Oh, he put on his hat, you know, his crown, wear his um, majestic clothes, you know, the best appearance, and come out to the gate and greet that person and invited him in. And then he even let that <laughs> terrifying being sit on his throne as a sign of respect, just to show how much he's thirsty for the truth knowledge, understand, and how humble he was, how sincere he was in this matter. That's what it is, okay? He wants to show that. Probably that's what he felt, you know. Oh, so rare, you know, so rare to have the truth. And then he treat him like God, of course. Eh? Right. And the next morning, he prepared a very high days, beautifully decorated, maybe similar to this, you know, okay, or better. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he uh, served him meals and drinks, and then he asked all his uh, musicians in the court, playing music, singing song, welcoming, you know, and dancing and all that, welcoming the teacher on the days, on the days, yeah, on the platform. And then the, and all the, the court officials, yeah, and the citizens in front uh, of him, in front of the teacher, and the, the king come out uh, greet uh, the teacher and kneel down prostrate in front of him, this uh, terrifying person. Imagine, imagine, huh? he must be really, really sincere. Hmm? And he prostrate in front of the teacher, you know, this terrifying <laughs> a vampire looking, and, and request it, you know, plead for the truth teaching. So the vampire said to him, <coughs> You know, King, to learn the truth is a very difficult thing. You want to hear it, it's not easy. I'm warning you, okay? Not teaching yet, just warning. <laughs> <laughs> and the king say, uh, very humbly, yeah? Please, sir, uh, please have mercy and compassion and on us, yeah? We are ignorant. We don't know how to, how to, how to request properly, yes? And respectfully. Uh, please teach us how to do it so that we can hear the teaching. And, uh, you know, the teacher, <coughs> the teacher, <laughs> the vampire teacher said, if you bring your wife and children here for me to eat, then I'll teach you. I told you it's scary. I told you I wouldn't want to be Buddha like that. Okay. All right. So, after the king heard that, he obeyed him and said, uh, he will obey and do that, what he wished. So he came back to the, the palace, called his wife and children. He said, I have to tell you this. Husband, wife, parents, children, loving each other, clinging to each other, but it's only in the cycle of life and death, of 
impermanence. Even so much love, one day must separate. Even so much attachment, one day must cut asunder. By death or disaster or sickness, anything, anything, anything in this world is not real, is not permanent. So because I want to find a real way, the truth, in order to liberate myself also and for you also, meaning the wife and the children. Therefore, I want to, you to offer your life to the teacher because that's what he wanted, so that I can, I can learn how to become Buddha. What do you think about this? Uh, the wife, not you, the wife. <laughs> I'm still telling the story. <laughs> so, they agree. They kneel down in front of the king, say, we will obey your command. Yeah, just like that. Probably that's, at that time, the wife must absolutely obey the husband, the children also. But maybe because they also know this is for good cause. You see, probably the king is such a uh, true seeker, sincerely true seeker. And so the wife and the son already knew that, yeah? And also became used to his idea and his way of, you know, searching already. Huh? Abraham. Abraham? Yes. Yeah, he also, also sacrificed his son, but then finally the god didn't kill the son. Yeah, but he killed the goat. What kind of god? Oh, maybe it's just symbolic, you know? Yeah, he probably won't kill the goat either. either. What kind of god who needs to eat the goat anyway? Then I won't worship him. But the Buddha was so desperate, you know? He was so sincere, and so sincere, so pure in his heart, that he doesn't doubt one second this kind of teacher, you know, who even asked to eat human flesh before he even teach the truth. You understand? Nowadays, you know, even you would say, you know, I won't do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Probably I also say, I won't do it. Yeah. But he was so pure, so sincere, so desperate. So they do that, okay? After having uh, obtained the agreement from his wife and children, he brought them in front of the teacher, of the uh, vampire-looking teacher, and gave it to him. And then the teacher in front of the whole assembly, take them one by one, eat them. Yeah, I'm telling you, in a blink of an eye, in a blink of an eye, he finished them, alive. Everybody sticking his tongue out and, you know, and shake their head and, oh, you know what I mean, yeah? Oh, God. Everybody was so scared, so frightened, and so disgusted. I would be, too. Hmm? We would be. At that time, all the court officials and the citizens saw that the king doing such thing, you know, they don't like. They don't agree with that. They don't feel satisfied with that. And then they feel that the king is too uh, superstitious, you know, too stupid, too, too crazy in his belief. Yeah. But they do not know truly that the king do all that, that other being, other human could never do because he truly wants to find a way to liberate others, yeah? So he sacrificed. 